Hey everybody, my name is BanjoFreak64 and I'd like to thank you for coming to the Cheetos Challenges run for the evening. Joining me this evening we have Retronuva and By9. Um, By9, would you like to start saying a little bit about yourself? Sure. Hi. Um, I'm By9. Uh, I was the, I want to say lead, uh, the lead on this tack? Yeah. Um, I made the hub world, I made one of the worlds, and uh, I brought everyone's other everyone else's worlds together. It was a community effort, um, so each person made one world, uh, and it was really fun. And Retro, want to tell a little What's bit about up? yourself? Um, I, uh, yeah, I did one of the levels, um, and I also helped a bit with the music. Um, yeah, Bonai uh, led everything and kind of got everything together. So. And uh, I helped develop a level as well for the hack. Um, this whole thing had a community of about six developers come together to create the project. Uh, and we also had some hacking assistance as well. So it was a really good display of the talent of the community. Um, and so I think with that, we're just going to kind of jump right into it. Um, I'll give a countdown for the timer to start and we will get, uh, get playing with Cheetos challenges. So time will start in three, two, one, go. All right, bud, you got this. All right. So uh, right off the bat, I actually have to talk to Cheeto at the beginning. Otherwise, we don't have the ability to see what he says at the end credits. Um, however, this speedrun is a little bit less uh, than orthodox, so to speak. It's going to be a little more casual, uh, and we're going to take it kind of slow just to make sure that we can showcase a couple of different things throughout the hack. So... Uh, I don't really think there will be a world record or a personal best tonight, but I am not not mad about that at all. Uh, in fact, uh, the first level that you're seeing here is Sky High Spire, made by that cow guy. Uh, he's a prominent member of the Banj Banjo's Backpack community, and he even has his own hack developed called Port Fun, which he calls the troll hack. Uh, it's quite entertaining. I love that hack. It's yeah, so much fun. Yeah, well, he does a lot of really interesting assembly injection, uh, and in the process, he kind of takes the player and sort of uh, throws them into a different universe for the Banjo Realm. Quite entertaining, if you ask me. It's worth a bit shot. of bamboozling. <laughs> a lot of bamboozling. This level also uh, has custom music by... Uh, um, by oh Retro the 10. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't sure what, 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 which name to use. Uh, yeah, but yeah, that it's, be, yeah that's fine. it's a sick <laughs> name. I love the level thing made for this Thank level. You. He, yeah, uh, I had asked him what he wanted like it to sound like, and he had mentioned the one, uh, the one thing that was used in uh, in like a lot of the Smash uh, Smash games, and then also the, the Zelda two level. Um, I forget. Uh oh, is, no kidding. But I, I kind of use like the same kind of chord progression, and, and he said he said it sounded pretty pretty great. So, not with that. Oh, you're, you're, you're killing it right now, dude. Hey, thank you. Uh, being the first level of the hack and the first level of route, I probably would argue I have the most practice of this one. <laughs> ah, that makes sense. So it's all downhill from here, you're saying? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Don't even ask me to uh, get a decent time on Oceanarium. <laughs> that, that one's hard. This is the, the level I made. Yes. Finan, tell us a little it's, bit about the process. It's probably my favorite. Um, well, it took a while to bake all the cakes. <laughs> um, no, I, I, uh, so the, the, the idea behind this hack in general is it's like a, it's a diorama hack, which basically means each world is like very small or condensed. And, uh, one idea I've always wanted to make into a level is a is a big bakery i just thought it'd be fun you know like there's so many different things you can do with it um okay. these spoons yeah no these things are the bane of my existence pretty much from uh, <laughs> from any angle uh i try talent trotting on them all the time and i always mess up uh one of the cool things i wanted to showcase was the back of the book you have this like really cool rhyme uh and it's really long uh <laughs> if you really want to check it out i would recommend this checking out the hack uh but i don't think i think for the sake of saving time i'm i'm gonna just move forward yeah, so it's, it's that's very okay clever. it is very, very clever good. it's very it sounds just like though. something from like a rare game yeah absolutely 
uh, Binine, you do have such a phenomenal writing style, too. Um, what are some of the other hacks that you're featured in? Oh, uh, so, yeah, I, I wrote the dialogue for pretty much all of uh, Mark Kirko's hacks. Um, Kirko mods, I guess people call them. Um, which has been a lot of fun. He, he makes amazing stuff, so it's nice to get the, be able to contribute. Um, it's it's super involved his projects. Uh, and oh my god! <laughs> he, the, like the 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 uh, what he gets out of the engine is just crazy. Insane. Well, and he does such a, a good job too of like adding custom models and uh, making adjustments to levels. I've tried creating banjo hacks on plenty of accounts, and the amount of glitches that I encounter is quite a yeah. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> folks, folks at home who are thinking about um, ROM hacking old games, it's a great time. It's a lot of fun, but be prepared for uh, the hair. weirdest bugs you've ever seen in your entire gosh darn life. I mean, really, because you know these games are not built to handle custom content um so you can run this as very interesting things i'll say that uh speaking of other hacks retro what what other types of projects do you work on at least in terms of oh, gee. uh i did um i did lead the the one hack um which released a few months back back uh last year end of last year called yeah, cutthroat same. coast which uh binine and banjo freak here actually also kind of had a had a hand with uh, Binine made a couple areas um, and did a bit of the uh, um, custom enemies and characters um, and then Banjo Freak um, uh, helped with this phenomenal uh, strategy guide that that uh, oh people the guide is so good on. yeah yeah it's like thirty plus pages yep. of like different little like tidbits about the characters and. Uh, and like custom like ma little map overhead views and a bunch of screenshots and like you know like every uh, every little walkthrough on how to how to get all the jiggies basically like you know game strategies back in the day mm -hmm. and uh, and that it turned out really nice really great yeah. and I did Thank some of the music great. and most of the areas and yeah and then a couple other people also had a hand with it that was in the in the Avengers backpack community yeah yeah um, so cutthroat now post. we have this kind of oh, like sorry. Cheetos, sorry, Cut Their Coast kind of like Cheetos Challenges was a community project that developed into this really neat thing, and it was awesome to be a part of it. Yeah, it's just one level, but it's a bit, um, whereas these have, I think, two jiggies um, and uh, 20 notes. Uh, yep. that, that's like a whole level with 10 jiggies and um, 100 notes. Yeah, these two hacks probably, these two eggs. it probably has the same amount of content as this hack overall. Yeah, Even yeah. Though this is like a bunch of worlds just because they're a lot smaller. Yeah, it takes about probably an hour for a for a new person to, to run through it. It is a pretty quick hack, honestly, and it's kind of nice because all the levels are sort of like a diorama, so to speak. They're just like blips that you would see from a larger level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Banjo Freak, uh, who made this dumb, <laughs> yeah. terrible level that this, no one likes? This yeah. terrible level yeah. that nobody likes, you say. <laughs> well, uh, funny, funnily enough, this is Calamari Canyon. This is based off of... Oops. Oh, that was good. Uh, this is based off of Calamari Dungeon nice. from Super Mario, from Mario Kart 64, and uh, I made this level. I'm, I was joking, by the way. Uh, this level is awesome. I really the the vertical design is really nice. It's it's compact, but it feels very expansive just because of yeah. how vertical it is in the flight. Super um, non-linear. Lots of different mm -hmm. like paths you can go. Thank you. Feels good. Yeah, that, that was, was actually level. It's pretty crisscrossy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That was one of the things I enjoyed so much about putting this level together. I, I didn't want it to be just a, a linear process. Uh, I wanted to try to give the players sort of as many ways to get from the area with the huts over to the area with the train tracks um, as, you, as I could. So right away there are three main pathways that you feature in the form of the tunnel underground, which we're going to see in just a second. Um, that little blip in the wall that we'll see right now, and the uh, uh, the train, the train tunnel. Um, so it's kind of like it gives the players a little bit of room for bre breathing, and, and they can kind of choose their own adventures, so to speak. 
And uh, yeah, that little guy right there, um, that's a ripper, just reskinned essentially as a cactus. But uh, that was a lot of fun to make. He's he's quite the sar sight for sore eyes. Mm -hmm. And Very then I fitting. just wanted to uh, show this little bit off too. This was actually yes. a rip of the model of Calamari, uh, Calamari Desert from mm -hmm. Mario Kart 64. Gosh. Very nice. Just a cool little, uh, little oh, skybox God. kind of area. And that was Calamari Canyon. And I do really Fuck. like the two jiggies that you have in that one. They're, they're, I think you, you implemented them like really, really interestingly. Mm -hmm. Really fast. These are, these are going by so fast. You're already halfway done. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 30 minute game. This, uh, this next level is developed by a user named Brady. Uh, it's called Cascade Clips. Mm -hmm. And it's got music featured from Quest 64. Greatest video game of all time. Yeah, the best <laughs> RPG on the N64. <laughs> is I that actually, the only RPG on the N64? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. okay. I actually, uh, it's on it my list disappoint. of things to try to play this year. I, I've been watching a couple no. of videos of Quest 64. Yeah, I know. Ostracize so me. Grindy, it's fine. Right? It's, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good, but... is that right? But I hope you enjoy trying it. Okay. This well, I mean, cool. it has like a, a kind of mashup of different themes. Yep. It's sort of like Click Clock Wood in the sense that you have just like a normal spring section, a summer section down below, and then a winter section up top, which, I mean, spoiler alert. But uh, this level's kind of funny. Uh, enemies don't have rules. <laughs> so you can just kind of do stuff like that. Yeah, so uh, w earlier when I was talking about weird glitches you get when you, like, run that gold games, um, for some reason, in this level, uh, enemies below a certain point on the map, just, uh, if you hit them, they don't exist anymore, and I don't mean they get destroyed, I mean they don't exist. They don't drop <laughs> any health. They just cease. They cease to exist. Yeah, we they still just... don't know why. <laughs> yep. Oh, that one, uh, that one was a little bit more normal. He actually that one giblet. worked. But you didn't drop well, these ones. Just head out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're like SpongeBob. I'm gonna head out. Bada bing, bada boom. Easy. This is this probably the fastest level? This is actually one of the slower levels, believe it or not. Really? Huh? Yeah, I can believe um, it because there's three different areas you have to go to. Mm -hmm. Each takes takes a bit of time to get between. This and is the last one. The progression in this level is uh, unfortunately linear because there's only one flight pad uh, at, between the main and the lower areas. So you're forced to go down to the mm -hmm. to sort of the sandy beaches before you can get up top here. It's kind of a cool reveal though, you know? You don't really yeah, expect there to be this like, snow island above. People took very different approaches, right? Like, um, Banjo, for your level is extremely open ended. There's a bunch of different, like, little things to do and get. This level is a lot more like a. Uh, linear sort of, not like story, but it's a um, path. A little adventure, yeah. Almost reminds me of like a Mario level, you know, like the kind of floating platforms and like the linear nature. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's definitely true. Very nice. Another thing that uh, you'll get to know when it comes to banjo hacks is that cameras don't really like walls. <laughs> You're telling me there's a bad camera in an N64 game? What? Why would there be? I know. What are I you know. talking about? Ooh, nice dodge. Thank you. I wasn't supposed almost, to land. I almost didn't get the <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, because it skips the animation, right? Yep, that's the goal. I'll try and do it again I mean, here. Would you Would you really want to take that dance away from them? Well, I have to take the it. final Jiggy Jig away. It's important to save the frames. Oh, no. Two we did. That's true. Oh, yeah, I mean, but... Tui. Tui incorporated a better animation for the Jiggy Collection. Oh, slow descent. What? And just like that. Nice. I, nice. Get I, I do love how you end all the levels by yeeting yourself off the side. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's actually very a very intentional speedrun strat called a death warp. Um, I know, I know. <laughs> okay, alright. Although it isn't technically a death because you don't die. You just get worked back to the start. True. 
there's a very unfortunate clip actually right here that I don't want to showcase because I fell through the floor. <laughs> uh, or, that, but... Yeah, I could I could not figure that out. Uh, for some reason, people kept falling through the floor when they tried to enter the book. I couldn't figure out why. So uh, it's a feature. It's 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 a feature. Mm -hmm. So uh, retro. I, I do believe that oh, no. you might have made this level, is that right? Oh no. Yeah, I did. You want to it's, tell like us a, a it's like a cityscape project? with like a night, it's like a nighttime cityscape. Um, kind of kind of like old, kind of like a, almost like a film noir vibe. And it's uh, nice. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's a bit straightforward. Um, it's a bit more about the adventure, like a bit more about like the kind of details about like, going around the different houses and uh, exploring the rooftops and all. But um, it was a bit tricky making like an interesting city layout because uh, they tend to be pretty like not very good settings for levels and in, in like platforming games because they're very grid like very flat. So I tried to like have some different slopes and different like crates to go on and like you know being able to go on the rooftops and like the the window sills little platforms and uh, and basically a, you have to very uh, good amount of verticality associated with this level too because like you utilize the entire space incredibly well because like thanks. i just jumped on some boxes in the back corner i mean we're going up on top of the roof now and there's like multiple rooftops you can go on so yeah, it's trying to be a bit economic with the space. That, like, for example, like Mario Odyssey, for example, that has the city level. That's a lot of fun to explore around in, but the way, the difference between the way Banjo controls and Mario controls means that Mario can have these great big wide open spaces and they're a lot of fun. For Banjo... Yeah, like a playground almost. Yeah, Banjo, just, his moveset is not really, isn't really, isn't really conducive to that. You need to have like more dense, tightly packed kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, that makes it hard to do something like this, but you pulled it off. Because it's... Thank you. And look at yeah. that cinema sign. Holy buckets. <laughs> Thanks. I did I did have a little bit of a What's, uh, what's playing here. tonight? Yeah, what's playing? Let's see. Well, let's see. We've got The Curse of Cutthroat Coast, How the Grunch Stole Christmas, or The Challenge of Cheeto. Oh, <laughs> three good picks. Three very good picks. Funny, because I think that I think uh, the viewers saw Grunch earlier, didn't they? They did, yep. Friday night, right. uh, there was a showcase of Father Grunch Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you can catch that stream again a little bit later, I assume, once the bots come out. <laughs> so, uh, tell me about this this individual here that we're about to meet. <laughs> yeah, so I, I thought I would uh, reuse a bit of Nabnut's uh, kind of mechanic by having this little character here where you have to find these uh these like these like top secret briefcases because he's he's trying to um, he's like a conspiracy theorist like living in in the sewers where he, you know he's trying to bust open like the the secret of the aliens and like area 51 and all mm -hmm. but uh yeah this, like, this character feels very psychonauts to me <laughs> oh true good point good point so he's very mysterious with the question mark and all mm-hmm All right, so we need six documents to uncover for Mr. Question Mark here. And I think you already got them. Luckily, yep. we have all six. Wow. <laughs> we are prepared. It's that. according to plan. Take them. Take all of them. Very nice. I think that is maybe... The second Jiggy Jig that we've seen so far? Oh no, we did see one in Grunty's Baker hmm. too. Oh, and I will say this uh, this level was kind of inspired by the, the painting um, Nighthawks. Yeah, actually. And you can kind of see that on the right of the screen, that little uh, that lovely little drawing that Bi9 did of the level. That's just yeah, a better look. See the resemblance? I already swapped out the uh, overlay for it. <laughs> well, there you go. Very nice. And the last level. The final level of the run. This level, I think, is based loosely off of the aquarium level from Super Mario 64, which is pretty infamous for its design. Um, this level was developed by Squash MVP, and it's called uh, Oceanarium. This level is mean. It's I'm just unforgiving. Say right now it's mean. It's unforgiving. Um, 
Which is really cool, because every other level in this hack is pretty, pretty uh, accommodating. Pretty manageable. Yeah. This one it, uh, bears its teeth. Literally, <laughs> actually. It separates the bears from the boys. <laughs> but uh, Squash does a really nice job, in my opinion, of incorporating a bunch of different NPCs from the Banjo universe. So, like, we already met Snacker, we just saw Gloop here, and if any of you fans out there are recognize Nipper's shell, well, then you're in for a treat, let me tell ya. But, um... This level's kind of like a big sandbox, almost. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot Maybe. to do, especially stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This one's definitely like a lot more spread out. The others are, are pretty dense, but this one's this one kind of takes you takes you all around. Mm. I will say though, the design, in my opinion, is gorgeous. Like he uses starfish on the side of the fish tank. He's got these really nice set pieces that you would find in a typical aquarium. The, uh, like I was saying earlier, the incorporation of multiple different characters from the Banjo universe and the challenge of the, the platforming, I think really kind of helped tie the whole thing together into a, a, a fantastic level choice. Yeah. I'm just waiting for you to fall off the mini pond. <laughs> Bro, my heart is no, like he's, going he's 100 right miles now. a minute right now. <laughs> oh God. You got this, man. Oh, yeah. This is definitely the hardest one right? for, you, yep. for, your, for you to get down. And that right there may have been the hardest jump. We'll see. I got one more. Because also, shortly. it's it's punishing if you fall because you have it takes a while to climb all the way back up. Yeah, it doesn't really kill you track. as long as you drop in the water, but you have a long. Uh, long it kills time you time emotionally. <laughs> yeah, your your morale it just right. drops to zero. Mm -hmm. Uh, time loss. Any if you fall from the top of uh, of here trying to get back up can be anywhere between thirty seconds and a minute depending on the route that you go. Mm. So it can be kind wow. of unforgiving, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Squash also did a really nice job of utilizing the entire fish tank. Like we're going all the way to the edges over here. There's nets along the side. I mean, <laughs> you see pretty much everything. Starfish on the wall. So I had to. I, like I, had, coral and stuff. I had to do a little bit of executive editing to certain world. No, to all the worlds. Um, <laughs> just to keep the mind line together. <laughs> um, but yeah, for this one, I, I added arrows to the sides of the um, tank because you, because of the rendering distance, you can't even see them until you're close by. It's just one of those things. The that... dialogue, Dan. What's Sorry. that? Oh yeah. Thank you. Just want to make sure you didn't skip the dialogue up here. I appreciate that. I um, I'm about to set up a somewhat of a difficult trick. Um, at least it's difficult to me. Anybody in the banjo speedrunning community is like. Psh. This is easy. Uh, but this is called Nipper Skip. Uh, hopefully I can get it. But essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to beak bust and then hopefully make it into a good spot. And I didn't do that. So instead we'll get to see Nipper's dialogue. Uh, normally if you beak bust and you land on the ground in front of Nipper, you sort of have these invincibility frames, so to speak. And it allows you to jump into Nipper and grab the jiggy ahead of schedule. And it's, uh, it's kind of nice to showcase, but... I would have loved to see it. <laughs> you know, I uh, I can get it on emulator pretty easily, but I definitely am not as well sure, practiced on the sure. 64. <laughs> I mean, I've got like two or three recorded runs with it, so... And it's every jiggy, isn't it? Yeah. Well done. And these are the last two notes. If I can figure out draw, dis draw distance on it. And then time will come up here relatively quickly. I just have to go drop off some jiggies, and as soon as I talk to Cheeto is when we can stop the timer. And Binan actually made the this hub world. I don't know if he mentioned. Pretty cool. So what would you call this hub world, Binan? Uh, oh, uh, Cheeto's... Alcove, I want to say. I had a, I, I think I had a better name than Cheeto's Library, but that might have been it. I, uh, I. Oh, it's... so <laughs> because this level replaces Gruntilda's Lair, I had to replace the Gruntilda taunts with something. So I looked online to find a list of uh, philosophical quotes, and that's just so uh, Cheeto will randomly bring up philosophical quotes <laughs> while you're in the hub. 
an enlightening raw mag. <laughs> yeah, this it really makes you think. All right, and time will come up shortly. And time. Let's go. Very nice. Good job, man. Hell yeah. Yeah, so um, just wanted to give a couple shout outs. Um, obviously, thank you, Retro Nuva 10 and By9 for being here. Thank you for joining me on the commentary. Um, huge Absolutely. thank you to the creators of Banjo's Backpack, Skill, KBM, Subdrag, Teehee, Jumbo23, Poke Kid, Comet, Rune Hero124. Um, they paved the way truly for what we do, and it's it's an honor to be able to showcase all of this with you guys today. Um, thank you to Fan Game Marathon for having us. This has been fantastic. Um, I do think that we have a little bit of time left, so I'm going to just try and see if I can show off a couple things if you guys want. A couple glitch Ooh. showcase exhibition items. Okay, okay. All right. Um, so right off the bat, I had mentioned earlier... And Vinein had spoken to me about a book clip. So, <laughs> right in front of Twilight Avenue, if you get lucky, you can just kind of clip through the wall. <laughs> I uh, I experienced it a little earlier when I was like actually falling through the floor. Let's see if I can get it to work. Oh. Maybe not, but. Uh, oh, I think you'll get it. Any t anytime you uh, anytime you play a. a retro game from like this era they always say that walls are just a suggestion oh <laughs> all right i uh i will move on from that one ah uh, close uh another glitch that i wanted to showcase which is kind of funny i i was able to show off the enemies a little earlier that don't produce honeycombs uh however there was another clip that i found just yesterday i want to say where if you swim down into this area here if i can find it there it is uh and you get too close to the wall banjo can just sometimes fall through just like that and now i'm actually soft locked <laughs> so i'll have to oh save gosh. the game and quit but there's no possible way to get back up you can wow. try wow. yeah so that's eternal damnation eternal damnation Whoever is stuck beneath the water. And then, uh, yeah, of course, there's a couple of glitches that we utilize throughout the entirety of the run. Um, a lot of different exploits include the quick dive, which is pretty neat. Uh, let's see, where can I show? Probably Oshiri. Um, oh, Banjo Freak. Yeah. Um, when you get to the second floor, would you mind showing off our little friend on top of the bookshelf? Oh yeah, I forgot that he existed. Where is he? I don't think I know of this. Um, oh gosh, I don't remember which one he's I on. I heard the legends. I th uh, actually, it's, I it's, think um, I know. it's the pet of um. Ruby. The, yeah, Ruby. Thank you. Oh. Is it? Oh yeah, I think if you yeah, if you jump off the ladder, I think you build it. There he is. There he hey, is. Very nice. Hey. You can't even we'll see, see him. him. <laughs> oh yeah, wow, he's really tucked in there. He do be hiding. Alright, I'm gonna quick head into Oceanarium to showcase a quick dive. So, uh, I don't necessarily know all of the specifics behind how this works. However, Banjo has like states that he enters in the process of his animations. And if you end that animation over water, sometimes you can just quick dive into the into the water for like a faster movement speed. So like I'll showcase it here if I'm lucky uh, with Snacker. There we go. Generally, you can get a lot lower than that, but uh, mm. I was not so lucky. Mm. Very nice. But um, yeah, I I don't necessarily know how much time we have left. I think the estimate was about 30 minutes, and I would imagine we're probably pretty close. Alright. Yep, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's even pretty good. Sweet. Um, yeah, if you guys want to check out any more ROM hacks, feel free to check out the Banjo's Backpack Discord. We've got the Discord link up on the overlay for you, um, and... You can always just search on YouTube, uh, Banjo-Kazooie mods. There's plenty that'll bring you right back there. 
Yeah, and thanks yeah. for everyone for watching. Yeah, thank yeah. you for watching. Wolf, thank you for having us. Of course. I like the idea of having the uh, the Discord sidebar. It's, it's, it's fun. I like it. <laughs> we have to plug it. <laughs> we need <laughs> members! <laughs> Please make mods for us. <laughs> Well, thank you guys for the, the great run and the great showcase and commentary and everything and for being in our marathon. Thank Appreciate it. It's been an honor to be here. Thanks for having us. Of course. All right. We will uh, go ahead and set up for the next run, which is going to be back to an I Want to Be the Guy fan game of I Want to Arcana of the Tarot, which is crazy high production value and super cool and kind of a mess in the best way. <laughs> so... Looking nice. forward to it. I guess I'll have to stick around and watch this. Dang. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm going to pass out. Enjoy your sleep. <laughs> All right. Have a good one. Thank you. Have a good one, guys. You too.